Hans Davis. Niklaus Davis. Are you ready? You're at, are you sitting down? <laughs> yes, I don't have one of those stupid ass standing desks. What do you take me for? A Nazi? <laughs> Is your butt firmly in your seat? Are you strapped in for what I'm about to say? I'm not just am I strapped in, I am strapped on, Nick. Hans, we need to talk. Ah, uh, what about? About the Xbox Games Showcase. Which Xbox, Nick? All the Xboxes. Xbox Sex. Because sex sells. That should actually be their tagline, sex sells. No, that'd be a That's terrib- a fantastic be a idea. terrible tagline. Yes, the Xbox Games Showcase, where Microsoft promised they would be showing off all their first party games for the Xbox Series X. After their very lukewarm original showcase that they showed off, I think it was like this end of May, and then Sony in the interim have had their kind of big reveal of PS5 games. It was Microsoft's turn to do the same. Lay their cards on the table, if yeah, you will. Just whip the dick out, slap it on the <laughs> table, and be like, yo, Sony, this is what we got. Show <laughs> this me is what yours. we're working with. <laughs> and we kick off with Halo Infinite Hands, our first gameplay look at Halo Infinite. Nick. What is Halo Infinite? No, wrong, wrong <laughs> sorry, wrong sorry, sorry. Um, Nick, what did you think of this trailer? I thought this looked really good. Um, it's more Halo at the end of the day. I think that is anyone expecting this to suddenly be fucking Doom or something was setting themselves up for disappointment. It is more Halo, but I also don't think that's a bad thing. I think Halo is like still on its day, one of the best first-person shooter series around. Um, and this still looks really good. I think it, the addition of a grappling hook mechanic uh, will probably do a lot to help speed up the gameplay of Halo. And yeah, I think this does look really good. It looks a lot bigger compared to other Halo games. They actually show a full-on like map that you that you can open up and like look at, and there's waypoints and shit on it. So that's that. Halo already usually has pretty big levels, to be honest. But seeing that they're now at the stage where these levels need a map is pretty cool yeah you know this this kind of made me realize that halo was released before its time like if you imagine if the first halo kind of came out now where it had like the ability to be like a far cry game Hmm. because everything in halo already ties itself into that you know like it had warthogs and like banshees and stuff which would be great for exploring these massive open areas but obviously because of like technical limitations they were never never able to do that so this kind of seems like this is kind of like their magnum opus. Like, this is what they've been working towards yeah. is what finally, technically, we're able to deliver on what we, the Halo game we've been wanting to make for, uh, for how long? Like, original Halo was 2001. Fuck that shit. 19 years. <laughs> Christ, I'm old. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really good. Um, uh, the Banished are the main enemies. So they are a faction of the Covenant that was introduced in Halo Wars 2. Um, it's, I thought it was kind of weird that this is called Halo Infinite. And obviously the end of five seems to imply or spoilers for the Halo story. Um <laughs> that uh the end of five I believe ends with like Cortana going a lot more rampant and like g- gaining control of a lot of the AI in the galaxy. Yeah. And like how this kind of puts that in the back burner for Chief to go have this other story, I don't really know. But I'm sure a lot of people don't really care to be honest. I didn't like because uh, of the opening of this, it was like 2056. Yeah. 14 months after we lost. Lost what? Well, I don't, like, what did they lose? I, 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 I think that it's related back to Halo 2 or Halo Wars 2. So they lost a war? I think so. Okay. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a Halo <laughs> expert. <laughs> There's a lot more lore to Halo than I thought there was. Halo Wars 2 is really good. I've I don't played, know what it like, is, I've played but it for like, like two hours. <laughs> But like it's just there's a lot more lore to it. I thought it was just here are bad guys and here is Master Chief. Hands, Watch him hands, beat them all. Hands. Ask me anything about the Halo lore. Okay, what is a Spartan? Right. Next up, we had a trailer for State of Decay <laughs> Three, and there was a zombie deer in that trailer. That was a that was a clever trailer. That that zombie deer freaked me the fuck out. It looked weird. Yeah. Well, yes. Most things that are zombies do look weird, Nick. Yeah, that is very true. I just is it just me or they seem to be pumping out State of Decay's? Just pumping them out. I think that's just you. I think State of Decay 2 came out like 
a year or two after the Xbox One launch. Okay, other side of that then is I did not think Steel Decay had been that successful. That Apparently, released- like this, did, like. Steel Decay seems like the perfect game for it's like, like <laughs> the game pass. <laughs> just, just stop right there. Just the perfect, perfect game. game. <laughs> seems like the perfect game for like the game pass system. Where like it's probably on the outset a game a lot of people look at and eh, yeah, yeah. Does, uh, is that, <laughs> that should be the new opening that on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> and then like game pass, obviously a lot of people have it, and they're like, all right, oh, yeah, I'll, play, I'll try Steel Decay and see what it's like. And probably a lot of people are very surprised by how good Steel Decay actually is. When they like, yeah, probably not something you've got out of your way to go and buy and play. But when you bundle it as part of Game Pass, people probably like, oh yeah, yeah, it's fucking yeah, sure. Did you ever play it? Oh yeah. Had the Gigo? Did you go? Oh yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, like it is. It is surprisingly decent. Like I would not play full price for one of those games, but <laughs> as part of the Game Pass package, it is pretty pretty good. Uh, we get Phil Spencer shows up. He's like, yo, dog. Look at my t-shirt. Uh, and he confirms that every game shown during the Xbox showcase will launch on Game Pass, which that that falls in line with how Microsoft has been doing things anyway, so that's not really that big a surprise. Uh, we get a brief trailer for Forza Motorsport. Uh, no subtitle or number, which kind of makes me think they might be going towards like a more of a long-running live game, for lack of a better term. Like, if they're just saying, here, this is Forza Motorsport, it's not Forza Motorsport 8. Uh, it was announced to have native ray tracing and 4K visuals. Uh, we get a trailer for Everwild, which is Rare's new game. This had been announced, but for the life of me, I can't remember when this was announced. Hey, Nick, and I actually want you to try and answer it this time. If you say, what, what is, is this? is Everwild? I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I think it looks fucking... really neat, and I really like the tone and the style, but I have no idea what that game is. <laughs> uh, no fucking is it like clue a what wildlife the game conservation is. game? That's kind of what it looked like. Is it like Journey? It kind of looks like Journey. Yeah, like maybe. Like gameplay-wise, maybe. Uh, I don't even know. There was no gameplay, technically, it was actually. going around rescuing deer and other... There was that giant walrus <laughs> thing that pulled a tree out of the ground. That thing was pretty cool. Noah's Ark 2, the sequel. <laughs> The w- the wetter. <laughs> the wetter the better. Noah's Ark 2. <laughs> that's, that's not what I would call a Noah's Ark sequel. The wetter the better. I feel, like, I feel like you want to try and not like, be like, yeah, floods are great, aren't they? <laughs> that's, oh my god, can we please make a game called Noah's Ark 2, the wetter the better? <laughs> no. That would be fantastic. 100% no. <laughs> Uh, we get a trailer for Tell Me Why, which is a new game. I believe this is also announced, but again, for the life of me, cannot remember when they announced these things. Uh, from the Don't Nod, Life is Strange people. Uh, it looks like they're similar. It looks like one of their games, to be honest. I, I thought it was just Life is Strange 3. I'm not I also lie. kind of thought that, and then I remember, no, this has definitely been shown off before. Uh, it will be episodic, and the first chapter is out in August. Uh, we get an update for Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, which is announced they will have Xbox Series X enhancements for Ori. Uh, there'll be free upgrades, and it'll have native 120 FPS on the Xbox Series X. Just, right, so do you want to actually... There's something about this I actually really appreciated. So the fact that they showed side-by-side... Comparisons. Yeah. Do you, like that... Like It's very rare you'd see someone do that, mm. but it does actually really kind of show... When you get into the nitty gritty detail, the, to me who is a layman, right, and doesn't really know all these fancy technical more terms, like, like a F- layman, F- boom, got like, him. A, like FPS, what the fuck does that mean? Like so, but like, do you not think it was a really first person a- shooter? Hans, it's there's going to be 120 <laughs> first person shooters, in <laughs> shooters in Ori. Um, but like, it, look at that really helps, and it really does show just how much smoother it's going to run because like you don't notice it at the time until you have that side-by-side comparison. Uh, up next, we get a triple header from Obsidian Hunts. We get the announcement of the Outer Worlds DL... DL... Words. Yep, that's a thing. Outer Worlds DLC, which has this sort of like schlocky B-movie sci-fi tone to it, which is really did good. Did Far Cry 5 not do that as well? They had... Was it f- no, yes, like, like, actually they did, yeah. Like, they had, like the Attack yeah, on like, Mars Yeah, and like, stuff. all their DLCs were based on, like, weird 80s B-movies. Uh, like, yeah. one that's set in, like, Vietnam and one that's set in, like, Mars, yeah. But this was kind of expected. Um, you never got... In- did you? You did play it, though, didn't you? But oh, yeah. You never got- yeah. Did you complete it? No. So, like, there's, like, two or three planets that, even when you completely 100% the game, mm. are still locked. And so everyone was kind of like, oh... Either they've really cheated to make this game seem bigger than it is, or there's going to be DLC. Um, So so this has been kind of expected for a while. 
Uh, this is the first of two DLCs. This one is called Peril on Gorgon. Yes. Uh, these DLCs are not part of Game Pass, but you do get a discount if you have Game Pass. Uh, and the first one of these is coming out on September 9th. Uh, next up from Obsidian, we get Grounded. Uh, that Cyberpunk gag was really funny. It was. But how the fuck did they not go out and buy the license to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Uh, because and make that a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids I don't game. know, Hans. That, was, that would move units, Nick. Uh, this was announced a while back. I feel like this was announced whenever like they announced you know we have Obsidian, like when Microsoft bought Obsidian. Um, it's like a co-op survival type thing, and Obsidian has come out and said, yeah, we've tried to put our typical Obsidian story spin on this, even though it is like a, ge- a genre you wouldn't really expect, like story-driven elements. Everyone tries to do this, and I have yet to see one that does it well. Uh, that's launching in early access uh, at the end of this week, the 20th of July. And then finally from Obsidian, we get, as they've claimed, the next big Obsidian RPG, Avoid, which is sort of like them doing, going back to their first-person RPG styles, only more of a fantasy, medieval, sword, shield, magic stuff. Do, like, Does the fact of Obsidian is making an RPG make you automatically want to buy it, or do would you still kind of have to have some sort of other interest in it before you no, look like, at it? I was, like this is what I would expect. Obsidian. Like, yeah, I, I think it's cool they've done other things like Pleasure Attorney, and they're doing things like Avoid. But like these big RPGs are what I would typically consider like Obsidian's bread and butter. Mm. So yeah, like if they even just them saying, "Yeah, we're going to do like one of these style RPGs," it immediately piques my interest. Uh, no date on that, so I imagine it is still fairly early on in development. Like I wouldn't expect to see that probably earliest end of next year. Uh, Matt Booty shows up. Booty 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 man! Booty 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 man! <laughs> I can't remember what he said, but I just need to bring up that he showed up with his amazing name. Uh, we get a trailer for a game called As Dusk Falls, which sort of looks like a visual novel. Yeah, that was, is not a game to sell consoles. It no was harm. dubbed an interactive drama, and I thought it was a British studio making a game based in the American Southwest from a French creative director. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we get a update for Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 uh, nothing really of note about the game itself just kind of saying yo still making it will be on Unreal Engine 5 which is pretty cool and the game will be set in Iceland and they're going to be launching a series of developer diaries starting today of stuff like this I think they did the same like those developer diaries for the first one and they were really well received uh, we get a trailer for Psychonauts 2 featuring Jack Blackhands I am so happy that he still has a working relationship with Double Fine. Oh yeah, that's. I feel like he was maybe a nice to be in this, but I feel like it's the first time I've actually seen him doing it, and he's just singing a song. To sing a song while the game goes through a massive LSD fever dream. Yeah, so like, in terms of like, the, the gameplay and stuff, it does seem like more Psychonauts, but mm-hmm. I'm just, like, when we did Psychonauts on Game Club, it the gameplay was not the selling point to it. Yeah. Like, the world still looks awesome, and I think what they'll be able to do with the worlds because of the new technology and stuff will be really, really cool. I just kind of hope they do kind of modernize the gameplay a bit. Yeah. But, like, that was a cool... I think that was a really cool trailer. Yeah. It showed off quite a lot, so... Yeah, a really cool trailer, and I really like how it all looked, and, like... I hope that's not all the worlds, like, with that sort of, like, LSD trippy style, like, maybe no, like a subsection of the worlds. Part of me thinks that's just, like, that character's world, yeah. that brain's world. But, no, I think it really looked really cool, and Jack Black was... That song was pretty well before we get a trailer for destiny 2 beyond light and they announced that destiny 2 and all the expansions including the new one coming out in november will be coming to game pass which that's a pretty sweet deal considering like those expansions are usually like 40 quid a pop to get those and then like all the build-up stuff in between the expansions for free that's, that's a pretty sweet deal for game pass mm. and they also announced that uh destiny 2 will be playable on their new x cloud architecture as well which they didn't really go into it was kind of just thrown in there and then forgotten about. That's pretty cool. I, I as as much as I know you hate Destiny, that's that's a really good way of like playing Destiny and Destiny is sort of game that probably goes well on that subscription service because when they announced it, I was kind of thinking, oh, they'll not include the new DLC in that. That seems ridiculous. But they're mm-hmm. like, no, you'll get the new one too. That's that's the best way to get Destiny without spending all your money. Phil Spencer's back. Okay, I, no, is it Phil Spencer? I can't remember who comes up and just says, yeah, everything going forward will be Xbox console launch exclusive. So presumably either launching simultaneously, well, knowing Microsoft probably just means launch, launching simultaneously on Xbox and PC, not PS4 or 5. So uh, we get a trailer for Stalker 2, which Stalker games are a pretty big deal and seeing Microsoft fund the second one is pretty dope. Are they a big deal? Like, what like, is a Stalker like game? Like, the Stalker games are what, pro- like, 
You like the Metro games, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine a much creepier, like, a much creepier version of those. Like, that's mm. Stalker. Like, that sort of, like, Eastern European, Russian border, post-apocalyptic world with, like, radiation and, yeah, stuff like that. Metro probably wouldn't exist as a game series if it wasn't for Stalker, because it came out way before. Uh, we get a trailer for Warhammer 40k Darktide. Which looks like the 40k version of the Vermintide games, which are kind of like Left 4 Dead style horde first person yeah, shooters. Yeah. That looks pretty neat. I'm pretty excited about that. I really like the Vermintide games. Uh, that's coming in 2021. Uh, we get a trailer for Tetris Effect Connected, which is, uh, it said it was it's Tetris Effect, which came out last year or the year before. I cannot remember. Uh, we get a trailer for The Gunk. Yeah, this seemed dumb. I, I actually thought this looked really neat. It looked it, it like it's, look, it's a it's a weird name for something. It kind of just looks like a third person platform puzzle game. Yeah, and I'm just like, if I I have no real interest in that. Kind of looks like Epic Mickey a little bit. I mean, like the, the gunk people jizz their pants over the announcement of Crash Four, which is a third person platformer. So yeah, but yeah, but that's got Crash. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's still just a platformer. Uh, this is made by the Steam World developers. Steam World have done a bunch of games in a bunch of different genres, so it was pretty cool. To s- it's weird that this isn't a Steam World game. Steam World has done like four or five different games across like f- four different genres, like types of things. It's really weird. But it's pretty cool that they have like this overarching theme. We get a trailer for the medium from Blooper Team, who did the Blair Witch games. This was interesting because. I like it's it talks about like oh it's creating two worlds at once but how is it just displaying it in a split screen format cuz that seems dumb No I I don't I think that was just for the trailer I think you'll be swapping between them I think that's, the idea that's of split like screen t- stuff was pro- was just for the presentation I'd say Okay cuz like the idea of it if it's if it's legit generating two worlds at once that's quite a cool idea but then you also flip it, like, is it just going to be just palette swaps of the, you know, the same thing? Are they actually going to remodel things? Like, I like I said, like, when I say I'm interested, I'm interested in the te- technical side of it to see how it would work. Not necessarily in the game itself, but just in the technical, how it would work. Uh, we get a trailer for New Genesis Fantasy Star Online 2. I don't know what that so is. So I, I did dig around a little, because this, this confused me about what even the fuck it was. This to me, or... General consensus seems to be this is like their version of, say, a fantasy, Final Fantasy fourteen or Realm Reborn, where they sort of uh, redid the g- game from the ground up on like a newer engine and made it more up to date. Which is fitting, considering this did just come out like on Xbox One fairly recently. Uh, we get a trailer for the campaign section of Crossfire X. Do you remember Crossfire X, Hans? That was a really dumb thing with like the guys in the building. Yeah, and so then, this was like, like the-, the military shooter that when like we. It was like last E3, I think, and like we looked it up, and like apparently it's like the most popular shooter in China. Yeah, that was really dumb. Yeah, so this is the campaign of that, which is apparently being helped made by Remedy, who have done like Control and Alan Wake and that. Um, <laughs> I find it really funny that at one point it came up on the screen saying single player not included on Game Pass. What? <laughs> so it's just the multiplayer you get on Game Pass. You need to buy the single player separately. Fuck off. That was weird, and I can't believe that they did a slow, moody version of X gonna give it to you as this for this trailer. I have been singing that uh, like for ever since that stream ended. <laughs> of all the fucking songs. Bitch, please! They like slow down, make a moody version of Dub, a they moody did fucking dubstep. X gonna give it to you. Yeah, Crossfire X, duh. Yeah, I get that. That has, that's not the bit <laughs> I have an issue with. Uh, Phil Spencer, I think it's, I can't remember. These people all look the same. Uh, someone else comes out and says, yep, Reinforced One Lady. of them was a black woman, Nick? How can you say they all look the same? One of them... Because Hans, I don't see colour or gender. Too middle-aged. I middle am age. woke. I am woke as fuck. Uh, the Reinforced Lady is that they'll have no pay to upgrades for Xbox Series X versions of games, or to play them on the Xbox Series X. And that with Game Pass and all the games like ready and available to go on launch day... There will be over 100 games ready at launch for Xbox Series X. Do you think they added that in because of the rumours that some developers were going to p- make you pay for um, an upgrade from Xbox One to Xbox X? And Microsoft pretty much came out and said, no, 
no, you won't do that. I, I don't know. Like, but th- that, that's always been their message. Like, even from the start, they've been saying, like, when they said, like, yeah, for their own games, fair enough. Yeah, I think that was always expected. But then when they start saying, yeah, we're working with people like Cyberpunk to make sure that, yeah, they have an easy upgrade path for the for their games and using the smart delivery stuff. Uh, we get our one more thing, Hans, and it is the reveal of a new Fable game in development by Playground Games, the Forza Horizon developers. This was some Elder Scrolls 6 ash bullshit. Why? It was just fucking nothing. It was just a CG trailer. I, I feel like plenty of these were just CG trailers, though. <laughs> but this was like, like no, like, this is, I, the, I stand by this is as generic, bar for one gag, as the Elder Scrolls 6 trailer. But I also feel like this, I still have more faith in this coming out before the Elder Scrolls 6. I just, I was just like, it's called, it doesn't even have a fucking number or I, a tagline. Well, I, do, or I think it has, doesn't have a number because I think they're rebooting it. Of course they are. I mean, it's been like eight, nine years since the last Fable game. Um, I think this was, I think, y- yes, it was a CG trailer and that's whatever. I don't think this is going to come out anytime soon or well. Again, I would, wouldn't expect this before the end of next year at least. But I think this trailer was cool because... For a whole new developer working on the Fable series, I think they quickly established, yeah, we kind of get the tone of what Fable is. And I mean, br- British humor. Yeah, which, yeah, like, it's important, like, for, like, one of the, co- like, if you were to sell me here a new Fable game coming out, that tone of humor is one of the main things I would want them to do and get right. And was say, that Stephen Fry's voice or not? I can't remember. Like, I, it sounded like, it was definitely a sound to like, but. Yeah, it definitely sounded like twee British person, but I don't know if it was Stephen Fry. Uh, but no, I think I think I think this was the important thing. Yes, it would have been nice to see more of it to see where it is in development. But if it's not coming out anytime soon, just to say, yep, we're making a fable game. It's been rumored about for ages anyway. Uh, we're making it. Here's what we have, and here's the tone behind it. It's a it does the job, and that was it. They closed with that, and we are out. Uh, they did say there will probably be, there will be more of these before launch, which not ex- not unexpected considering they haven't talked about again a price or a date for the console yet. It just feels like we're in a Mexican standoff with Sony to see what what's gonna who's gonna blink first. Uh, but I think with I think Sony had to compare it to Sony because obviously that's what you need to do. I think Sony had better games, but I think in terms of hyping up the console you're gonna launch this holiday, I think Microsoft are getting out there with a much better message of like here's everything that'll work like day and date, and here's what you'll have day and date. You'll have hundreds of games on Game Pass. The Halo, which arguably looks like the biggest launch title of any of the consoles. And I think while their lineup doesn't look as expansive and is probably as interesting to some people as Sony's, I think their actual consumer proposition of here's what you'll have when you buy the Xbox is far better going into a launch of a console. I suppose like the big selling point on this for me is... If you have the Game Pass, yes, you are 100% probably going to pick up the Xbox because, yeah, you've got literally hundreds and hundreds of t- games at your fingertips from launch, and then you'll be given first exclusive access to this horde of new games and franchises coming out. Um, but for someone like me who doesn't have the Game Pass and I don't really have that much of an intention of getting it, doesn't like there's nothing here that makes me think fuck yeah game pass like maybe halo maybe but at the minute i would be like if i don't have a game pass i'm looking at the lineups for each of the consoles you keep saying um, don't have game pass as if it's this like exclusive club that no one can get into it's literally freely no, available <laughs> but the way it's the way you're phrasing it's, it's, free- like, it's, it's, it's impossible like, to get a game pass these days it's <laughs> everyone not, wants one it's not freely available i mean for you can get like three months for like one point <laughs> Yeah, but, like, it's just, like, it's just not something, like, I'm, like, not everyone wants to subscribe to something. Like, they just don't. People just want to pay, pay a one-off fee and, you know, be done with it. And, like, for someone like me, I'm probably still leaning more towards the PlayStation 5 just for the fact of if I'm not going to, don't want to hook up to a subscription service, I'd look at the lineups as standalone buying products. It's still leaning towards the PS5 for me, just. Uh, for me, it is just the case of, if I was to go out and buy one of these consoles at launch, and I sit there and compare them, you're like, alright, I buy off the cuff, imagine these are both £600, I don't fucking know. God knows at this point. I drop £600 on a PS5 and get Spider-Man until... Yeah! Money well spent. Yeah. 
I I I play I play, I play a smaller low, smaller scale Spider Man game for I don't know what a dozen hours, dozen and a half hours, or I I drop six hundred pounds on a machine I can play Halo for a dozen hours on, and hundreds of other games that I can sit there and whack away at my back catalog. I don't know, like those do not seem like an even deal. It's just it is. Sony are, have not been good at getting out there and saying, here's what's carrying over from the PS4, which I think is going to be very important to a lot of people, especially when the PS4 was far more popular than the Xbox One, and suddenly saying, all right, you buy a PS5, you're losing a lot of your library because it's not going to run. You have to keep your PS4 hooked up. And I'm sure you probably won't. I'm sure some of them will work and there will be backwards compatibility, but Sony have not got out there and said, here's, like, black and white, here's how this will work. Well, like they, but, like, Sony do have PlayStation now, though, don't they? But, like, that's the thing. is like, PlayStation now... One is a streaming service. Like, you actually stream the games. You don't download the games onto your console, for most of them anyway. Mm. So that's, people don't want that. People have come out and said they really don't want that. Look at how Stadia has bombed. And two, like, PlayStation Now is not as good a value as Game Pass, and I think no one would disagree with that statement. It is just, like, Sony have just, for some reason, failed to get out there and say, here is how the transition from PS4 to PS5 will work, while, like... From day one, it has been Microsoft's like key selling point, and it just feels really weird on Sony's part, as if they are not—they're not sure themselves what they are doing. But like, if if you were, like if you were put the two options in front of me now and say here pick one, I would still I would lean towards the Xbox Series X. I'll just stick with my PC, if only just because it doesn't have a dumb box like the PS Five. Right, you shut your fucking whore mouth. Hands, hands, neck, neck. It neck. looks dumb. Yeah, and what? I, I already so, have. So enough, is your face. I have enough dumb looking stuff that I need to hide from people when they come into my house. Fucking telling you. Art Deco is going to be the style it's, of no, everything going forward now. No. I have a bl- big black box for a PC and I can sit beside my smaller black box of an Xbox Series X and it'll be like, here, don't talk to me or my son ever again. But then that's how I feel about the PS5 is I have my big black and white box can stand beside my it's sexy, hot Asian wife <laughs> of also black and white. It's half Asian, half black wife. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hot Asian wife and be like, are you looking at my wife? Don't you fucking touch her. <laughs> but like, overall, yeah. It I'm, all comes down it, to style, Nick. And I have much more style than you do, so. If you say so, Hans. <laughs> if you say so. But overall, I thought this was a really good show. Like, just, it's cool seeing a lot of, like, ex- like Microsoft get out there and say, yep, we misstepped last time, but they made good on not f- doing the same thing again this time. Like, they showed off a lot of cool trailers, showed off a lot of gameplay trailers, actually, as well, which is pretty cool. And all this looks really neat. Um, I tend to agree. I think um, the games you wanted to see more of, you got to see more of, and there's a couple of cool Wii in the games that they've kind of announced and Maybe got some people hooked for, so no, it was overall a very good wee hour and a half showing. So, join us next time. I don't know what the next big thing that people are going to talk about is. My dick. It's, no, that's a small thing, hence. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will. when something big happens, we will talk about it. We'll be there. On the scene. Maybe if social distancing relaxes, we'll be there in person. I but. had no. Let's not. <laughs> let's not. Let's not fucking cash checks that my wallet can't handle. Just think, Nick. The next time, actually, by the t- by the time these g- consoles actually release, COVID might actually be gone. <laughs> I highly doubt that. Depends how long they take their asses to fucking release them. So join us next time. But for now, it is a goodbye from Hans. Have a good one. And a toodaloo from myself. Do not make that your sign off, Nick. (laughs) If that is your sign off, I will quit quit the channel. (laughs) (laughs) Hello!